But one state is taking a stand, Montana. After the Chinese spy balloon haunted the skies in February, Montana stopped messing around. First, they banned TikTok, then limiting foreign land ownership, which prohibits foreign adversaries, including China, from buying our property, especially near military bases. So let's talk about it. Joining me now, former Navy SEAL and entrepreneur Tim Sheehy. Now, Tim is trying to replace John Tester for the next six years as the next senator from Montana. Hey, Tim, what's your reaction, first off, as a military man, thanks to your service, to these two sailors uh, thinking China over America, allegedly? Well, it's nothing new to have uniformed military personnel conduct espionage for foreign nations. It's been going on since the beginning of time, from the Revolutionary War, which I believe you even wrote a book, wrote a book about the topic uh, a few years ago. Uh, what's fundamentally different about the Chinese approach, though, is based on our constitution and our form of government, we segregate ourselves and our society between business, economy, government, military, intelligence. And we look at the world through these silos and, and we pretend that they can't interact because in our structure, what happens domestically versus what our military does internationally should not connect to one another. China has a very different worldview and a very different tactical outlook on how to accomplish their world domination tasks. And that means it's a whole of nation approach. They don't see any difference between spying on military uh, espionage right. missions versus industrial espionage versus buying real estate around bases. It's all connected and it's all one effort. And this is just the latest example of their very, very concerted effort to undermine uh, the United States of America. I want to talk more about China, but I just want to get your quick reaction on this. A new survey done that only 60 percent of the American public thinks positively about the military. In recent, this is the lowest since 1997. Recently, it's been high as 95 percent. What happened in your view? Well, a lot of things happened, but the most obvious was our disastrous and embarrassing withdrawal from Afghanistan, a nation I served in multiple deployments. Uh, you know, in 2021, the summer of 2021, while we were watching Kabul start to fall, me and all my former compatriots were on the phone with each other uh, saying, there's no way we're actually going to pull out. The adults will finally enter the room and say, listen, we did this in Baghdad a decade ago. It was a complete failure. This isn't going to happen again. And it happened again. Right. And Joe Biden did it both times. And uh, that that event alone, watching people fall from aircraft, watching our former allies, interpreters, commandos being executed by the Taliban uh, right, right then and there, and the complete lack of accountability that followed that disaster in any other organization in the world, especially in business, if you screwed up that bad, right. you'd be fired, you'd be, you'd be held deeply accountable. And that didn't happen there. And I think that was a deep wound to the credibility of our military with the American people. And a lot of people are no longer urging their family members to do what they did. And that's put on a uniform and serve the country. And so much is this legacy service. I want to fast forward to TikTok. This is a tough political question I'm going to ask you. The state of Montana has got about over a million people. 340,000 are on TikTok. Your state is banning it. Would Senator Tim Sheehy ban TikTok? Well, obviously, the state level, you know, it has a has a certain amount of authority that they can do in the state. Now, will they be able to effectively uh, extinguish TikTok from usage within the state? That remains to be seen. Our attorney general. I should governor, have phrased it better. Uh, are you in support of that? I should say. Should we ban TikTok as a country? Should we? Uh, are you in support of what happened in your state? Yes, absolutely. It was the right move, and it was about time that we have some aggressive. Uh, uh, you know, counteraction to very uh, uh, deliberate undermining activities by the Chinese Communist Party. All right. So you're going up against John Tester. Every single time we hear he's vulnerable, we keep on hearing that he's a moderate. But nothing about his record, his voting record is moderate. He just talks that way when elections coming up, in my view. How do you plan on doing what other opponents couldn't from Rosendale on down? And that's winning. Why do you think you can resonate in a red state as a Republican where other red Republicans couldn't? Well, I have a different candidate profile than we've had here in a long time, perhaps ever. Uh, I am a battlefield veteran. My wife was a Marine. We both served our country on the battlefield uh, throughout our entire 20s, sacrificed a lot. Uh, and then we came home and we started businesses here in our state. We created hundreds of jobs here in the rural Montana economy. Uh, incredibly proud to have created these jobs. They're career oriented, engineering, technical jobs, uh, great benefits, great pay. And, and more impo most importantly, those jobs perform critical services for not just our state, but our nation, aerial firefighting, defense equipment manufacturing, uh, agriculture and food production. And I think that profile of job creation and military service uh, comes together in a state that ha has two very important statistics. We're the second highest state 
uh, for veteran population in the nation. We have a lot of veterans in Montana, 100,000 veterans in a state of a million people. Uh, military service, especially combat service, resonates with them. And we're also a state that's one of the leading states continuously for entrepreneurship. Uh, Montanans love entrepreneurship. They're individualistic. Uh, they have grit. They love hard work. Uh, they're hardworking people, and they respect that. So I think putting those two things together against a career politician uh, who's been in office and functions as, as New York's third senator uh, for almost 20 years now uh, is going to be a winning uh, is going to be a winning piece on the ticket. All right. Well, we're about to see. I know that uh, Donald Trump is staying out of your race. Have you picked a candidate to support? Yeah, so far, you know, absolutely supporting President Trump. You know, he's been, uh, uh, you know, completely unfairly prosecuted across the board here. Uh, listen, I'm not going to carry the water for anybody, uh, any candidate or any person. Uh, you know, he's not running for chief saint. He's not running for favorite uncle. He's running for president of the United States. And, uh, you know, what we're seeing right. happen to him, you know, from Alvin Bragg to these federal prosecutions is nothing other than an attempt at, at uh, excluding uh, a major party's political mm -hmm. candidate from success. Wow. And uh, as a party, we need to support him. The balance of power in the Senate could be on your shoulders, but you're used to big missions. Uh, Tim Sheehy, thanks so much. Appreciate it.